The last decade for Sunderland has been nothing but a roller coaster. From a staple of the Premier League, they nosedived all the way down to League One. And after their Sunderland Till I Die documentary became kind of a laughing stock. And just when we'd forgotten about Sunderland and thought they were destined to stay in League One for the rest of time, they climbed up to the championship and almost made it to the Premier League this year, bowing out in the playoffs. But I want Sunderland's positive momentum to continue. I want Sunderland to get themselves back to the Premier League and I want to make them champions of Europe which is why today we're going to rebuild Sunderland. This starting 11 that we've been given with Sunderland and the squad as a whole is very interesting. It's a very youth focused team which I'm a big fan of but a challenge we're going to have is balancing the youth and lone players, along with trying to build a squad that's going to get results and get us back to the prep. So let's rip in and begin this first season. Entering the transfer market straight away here though, ladies and gentlemen, as we're going to sign the young English centre-half Jacob Greaves from Hull City. And for once, the FIFA gods have looked out for us. His value has increased after signing him, rather than decreasing. Someone I have no intentions of selling though is Jack Clark. I have seen how good this dude can be in rebuilds, and I'm hoping more of that can continue you here. Birmingham, your offer has been blocked. And the first player out of the club in the Mr. Rebuild era is going to be Corey Evans as the Northern Irish defensive midfielder heads to Darmstadt. Ellis Taylor is 52 rated, so I'm hoping he can grow somewhat this season. If not, I'll just sell him. This might be a controversial player departure, but we're saying goodbye to Danny Bath, who we get 1.1 million pounds for. I'm sorry, Sunderland fans, but I've got to do what I've got to do. This might be an indication of what position I want to upgrade next, but we're going to be parting ways with Alex Pritchard. He departs the Stadium of Light and we get one and a half mil back for him. I really want this guy. Fabian Reda has been someone I've wanted for a very long time, but we're going to have to play our cards very smart if we're even going to have a chance of getting him here. BSC Young Boys, they want an 8% sell on claws, but the same money... Am I going to accept that? Yeah, I'm going to accept that. Just got to bank on him being a great prospect for us. Five-year deal is what I want. I'm just, yeah, whatever, three years. I am so nervous right now, lads. No release clause. I'm going to offer him all the money I can. Yeah, but they want too much. Oh my God, we're about to get walked out of the room. I should have sold one more player. I don't blame them. Yeah, that's disrespectful on my behalf. Accepting this here for Lyndon Gooch could give us enough money to go back in for Rita. I'm accepting that. Another offer and one that's going to get us four. 40,000 more pounds. Go there, please, mate. And there it is, lads. We have sold Lyndon Gooch to Stoke City. 780,000 pounds. I'm going back in for Rita. I want him that bad. Here's to hoping BSC Young Boys will accept a very similar offer to what we initially offered. 4.8 million pounds is what we walk in with. They want 5.3, but the tension is low. So I think if I just bump it up 100,000 to 4.9, we should be able to get it over the line, which we do. And on the eve of the championship season kick, off we get our man it is Fabian Arita here the Swiss attacking midfielder joining us from BSC young boys I am over the moon about that one two loan departures here as Bennett is off to AZ Alkmaar for the season and Sirkin is off to Bazista on loan for the season but that is our opening transfer window in the books I'm very happy with the business we have done genuinely curious to see how this season unfolds though because Sunderland in real life exceeded expectations I would honestly be happy if we matched what Sunderland did this year. Oh God, that changes everything. We have had the season that Sunderland was probably expected to have in real life. We currently find ourselves 17th on 34 points. I mean, the playoffs were only 10 points out of the playoffs, but that number is just daunting. And Joe Gelhart has been recalled by Leeds. Probably makes sense given I want our other Scottish striker, Stewart, to be the main man. I really want to sign either Diallo or Michu on permanent deals this season. However, we've only got 800k in the transfer budget, so I might have to wait and try bringing them back again next year. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, I'm wiping my hands clean and saying season one was all about building foundations. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say to make myself feel a bit better about an 18th position. That's wild. At least we weren't Blackpool, Rotherham or Wigan though. As we scroll the table though, yeah, we weren't even close to the playoffs this year. The automatic promoted sides are Southampton and Hull City. We take Greaves away from Hull City and they get automatically promoted. Chelsea have won the FA Cup. Arsenal win the Caribbean. 
Carabao Cup. And it is going to be Norwich City going up to the Premier League. No real surprises there. We made the right call. Three overall this season and bagged himself 19 goals. That is really good for a team that was as bad as we were. Saying goodbye though to Diallo and Michu who head back to their parent clubs. Gonna have to have some big questions next year though whether we bring them back. Yeah, look ladies and gentlemen, priority number one for me this year is getting Diallo back in Sunderland colors. And his contract expires in 12 months, which means hopefully we can bring the Ivorian to the Stadium of Light on a permanent deal for a cheap permanent deal. 6-8, they want 7-2. Let's meet in the middle, Ten Hag, and let's say 7 million pounds here for Diallo. Get him back in Sunderland colors. Di Diallo, we're one step closer, brother. I had to jump in and make it happen straight away. We have our intentions set out clearly and we have signed Diallo. Excited to have him as a cornerstone of the club moving forward and hopefully he's going to help us get back to the Champions League and the Premier League. Personally, it crushes my soul just a little bit when I have to sell an Australian, but it's business. It has to be done. Bailey Wright is off to the French League. Johnson falls in into the category of players that are super low rated and I would love for them to just get a little bit of growth so I can sell them on for value. Let's see if we can get Johnson higher than 55 overall. And it's a loan move for Bennett, but it's for completely different reasons than for Johnson. This kid could be a stud. So we're going to send him to Valencia for two years. This transfer might get a few people wound up north of the border. Patrick Roberts, a former Celtic man, we've sold him to Rangers. Hey, that's none of my business. I'm just pointing out the facts. We get two 2.2 million pounds back. I'm not going to lie, lads. I'm disappointed I couldn't get a new center midfielder into the side and that Diallo was our only signing of this opening window. We've worked our ass off behind the scenes, but we're going to keep Embleton as our starting center midfielder for the first half of the season and hopefully go back in in January and get ourselves somebody in the midfield. Getting ourselves into the playoffs or even automatic promotion, which I think we're probably too far gone for automatic at this stage, but we need to push. We're seven points behind the playoffs. We need a center midfielder. Let's do some work in this January window and get ourselves in that picture. Bringing in even a little bit more money to work with though, Carl Winchester off to New York City FC. Brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, for the weirdest transfer fee you're probably ever likely to see because we've got ourselves the new center midfielder. Don't get me wrong. This is an awesome pickup. It's a, oh my God, his value got tanked, but it's Pape Matasar from Tottenham Hotspur. We sign him for 6,187,000 thousand six hundred and two pounds that's a weird fee weird fee great signing oh, we've missed out we have finished seventh in the championship this season 74 points we miss out on playoff football by the skin of our teeth or 10 points to be more exact and i'm not gonna lie that definitely hurts a little bit i thought our team was good enough to comfortably get to the prem this year fulham centurions love to see it as a fulham fan but as we scroll down the table it's Oventry, reading and sheffield wednesday going down. Newcastle United have won the FA Cup in the Eddie Howe derby, but Liverpool have stopped Newcastle from going and winning both domestic cups. Okay, so it is going to be the Blades. They were in the Premier League last year, got relegated, and they're going to be going right back up through the playoffs. Mate, Ross Stewart, you are an absolute stud, my friend. 27 goals at 27 years of age. Here's to hope next year will be 28 and he gets 28 goals and gets us up to the Prem. Very glad I brought Diallo back though. And Rita, the investment is paying off. 12 goals, 10 assists. That's 20 two goal contributions. I am going to be letting Ellis Taylor go though. His growth was just absolutely terrible when he was in the Irish League last year. He's not doing much. We're going to let him go into the abyss. This season is all about getting ourselves to the Premier League. We need promotion. So our signings, I want them to reflect that, which is why we're going to jump in nice and early here in the window and get ourselves a new left back, an upgraded left back, Maxime Dusaipa. The Belgian is joining us here from Club Bruges. His value's gone up 3 million in pounds since we signed him. I'm happy. This has been a roller coaster today when it comes to values. And Dennis Serkin, who now falls to our third string left back. I want to get him some game time and some growth. So we're sending him out on loan for the year. He's a cult hero at Sunderland, but I had to do it, lads. He's in the final year of his contract. We need the money for him. He's getting on in age. So Luke 09, we're sending permanently to Spain. He's off to Spain and I'm in pain. Another loan move though. I've been trying to get this guy a loan move for three years and five Finally, we make it happen. I didn't intend for it to end up like this, but this is quickly turning into a window of 
loans. But this is a transfer that really signals my intentions. I want a new right back. And I want to go balls to the wall to find the right fit, which is why we're selling Hume to Rangers. And we have found our man, ladies and gentlemen. Sunderland do have a little bit of a history with American right backs. I mean, you've got DeAndre Yedlin, you've got Lyndon Gooch, and we're going to add to that legacy by signing Joe Scally from Everton. Bloody Scallywag is joining us here, and I'm hopeful he can be our right back of the future. We did pay £15 million for his services. This team needs to be pushing for promotion. Our lowest rated player is 75 rated. I mean, we've started to build a very balanced team here at the Stadium of Light. Let's get us back in the Premier League where we belong. It's a tight one, but this is exactly where we want to be. Just two losses all year. We need to just convert a few of those draws into wins. We sit in an automatic spot right now. We've got Watford, Burnley, Forest, Southampton, all breathing down our necks. Not gonna lie, I'm absolutely petrified of Ross Stewart getting injured and us not having a striker. So we're gonna go ahead and sign Ivan Romero off the free agents list to give us a little bit of a reprieve here. I mean, 73 rated, 23 years of age. That's not a bad backup option to get for free. What a season, ladies and gentlemen. We have won the championship title added to the trophy cabinet. It's our first silverware as Sunderland Gaffer. We get 104 points and it is ourselves and Burnley automatically promoted to the Premier League next season. Yeah, I love to see it. Some big name teams in and around the promotion zone as well. It got really tight there, but in the relegation zone, it's going to be Wigan, Derby and Charlton all down. Man United have beaten Fulham to win the FA Cup. Man City thump West Ham to win the Carabao. And it will be Bournemouth going up with us in Burnley next season. Probably deserved, given how close they were, to automatically going up. Remember last year how I said, Ross Stewart's turning 28, so he's going to bag 28 goals. Nah, turns out he wants to be 35. 35 goals for Ross, the hitman Stewart. I'm so interested to see how he goes in the Prem next year. And another phenomenal season from Fabian Rita. Our investment has paid off. I'm Unfortunately, though, we're going to be saying goodbye to Isaac Lihaji, the Frenchman returning to his motherland on a free transfer at FC Nantes. I wanted to re-sign him and then sell him on, but he refused a new contract, which absolutely sucks. This just feels right, ladies and gentlemen. Sunderland are back. Sunderland are in the Premier League. Most teams, when they get promoted to the Premier League, go and splash the cash and overhaul half their team. But I genuinely don't think we need to do that. I'm going to spend the vast majority of our budget on improving one key area, which is going to be in between the sticks. We have got ourselves a world-class goalkeeper here entering the Premier League in style. It is Marmada Shavili, the Georgian goalkeeper again. I suck at pronunciating his name, but I know this kid is an absolute baller and could go up a long way into keeping us up in the Prem. Now this, this just feels right. I was looking, I was like, All right, I want to get myself like a backup midfielder, somebody experienced. Jordan Henderson, a Sunderland Youth Academy pro prospect before he went to Liverpool. He's played at Sunderland before. He knows what the club is about. He is a Mackham from day one. Let's sign Jordan Henderson on a free on our return to the Premier League. Once again, I want to make a move that can kind of have our squad depth looking solid. An attacking midfielder here in Gus Till, who we're going to sign, signing the Dutchman from ESV for 10.5 mil. Signing just one player for our starting 11 in a Premier League season is a bold strategy. I can admit that, but I'm hoping hoping it's a strategy that pays off. We're going to get a better indication of that come January. And if I have to abort mission and go and make some big signings, even though we have no money left, I'll do that. But let's just get a better indication and get to January. So far, it is paying off brilliantly. We sit 11th in the Premier League here. We could seriously climb up towards the top four. We're only, what, 12 points out of four. But also on the flip side, we're only, what, seven points from safety. So this second half of the season. It's going to be interesting. We do desperately need some help though when it comes to having a backup center half, which is why we're going to spend £7 million signing Rob Atkinson as a backup center back from Hull City. Our strategy has paid off. I am happy about that. I am satisfied. I am cool with that. We have survived the relegation battle in our first year in the Prem with Sunderland. 11th position is a dream. We actually went down. Villa went down. Villa, Bournemouth and Brighton. And then as we scroll up the 
table. No surprises to see the team to beat is Man City. They've done the double Man City. They take down Spurs in the FA Cup. Manchester City have done the domestic treble. Wow. RB Leipzig have won the Champions League. Man City lose a European final. They have lost the Europa League final to Milan. And it is going to be Sevilla winning yet another piece of European silverware. Can Stewart do it in the Premier League? Our answer is yes. Ross Stewart. 19 goals is brilliant in the Premier League. For your first Premier League season, I'm very happy with that. Again, they're letting a couple of players go. Sona and Zach Johnson. Just let's be real. Deadwood players going off to free agency. It sucks because he's been here since day one, but I understand it. Anthony Patterson wasn't getting game time and he wanted out of the club. He had one year left on his contract, so we had to cash in on him this year rather than having him walk out on a free. So Anthony Patterson is now a Leicester City man. My mentality has officially shifted this year though, lads. I originally was like, all right, we're trying to get ourselves back to the prem. We're trying to establish ourselves and build those foundations. Now my mentality is let's add pieces to the squad that can start building a chance Champions League winning roster. Trying to think a few years down the line, signing a quality left back here in Fabiano Parisi. Dennis Serkin has had a lot of loan spells throughout his career. And we're going to add another to that list as he's off to Fulham for the season. Bringing Parisi into the side has given us the leeway to sell De Kuiper. We sell him to Atletico Madrid for 41 million pounds, which considering we signed him for what? 5.9 mil? That is a tidy little profit. We're also going to say officially a goodbye and a thank you to Jibola Alesse, who is off to FC Cologne. And to Elliot Embleton, who is taking Cristiano Ronaldo's number at Al Nassar. It's EE7 rather than CR7. Another marquee signing into the club, though, which I am really happy about. A huge upgrade into our center midfield position as Connor Gallagher is going to join us here from Everton for 52.8 million pounds. Our squad is in a really weird position right now. I think our midfield is in a really strong spot, but our defense most notably like Reeves, Ballard and Scally have a lot to prove this season. Are they going to be key pillars of the squad moving forward or are we going to have to upgrade them? It's really up to them. Let's see how we're doing on January 1. Ooh, this is a really good spot to be in. This is where we want to be. We're currently sitting sixth right now in a European spot. Let's keep pushing and let's get ourselves European football for season six. The growth has just not been what we need to be with Joe Scally though. He is last lagging behind compared to the rest of the squad. I'm adding him to the transfer list. Let's push for a new right back this window. Another man that has fallen out of favor at the Stadium of Light is Saar. He's staying in the Prem, but he's headed back to London, off to West Ham. And we got Joe Scalia move out of the club. He's also headed to London, this time to the West of London though, off to Brentford. Let's go get ourselves a new right back. The deal is done, ladies and gentlemen. It is Wilfred Singo, the Ivorian right back, joining us here from Torino. This is a massive pickup. The dude is rapid. The dude is a stud and the dude is ready to get us European football at the Stadium of Light. But lads, if you are enjoying today's rebuild video and you aren't already subscribed, what are you doing? Go and Scorpion and kick that subscribe button down below and help us on our push towards half a million subscribers. Mm, so close, man. I think that means Conference League dependent on other results. One point behind Tottenham in sick, four behind Arsenal for an automatic Europa League spot. That is frustrating, but at least we know now we are in the picture. Man City just two losses away from an invincible season. That is impressive. And as we scroll down the table, Newcastle almost got themselves relegated, but it's the Blades, Southampton, and Palace. Yes! Oh my god, yes! The Black Cats, Sunderland. We have won the FA Cup. Sunderland win. That is awesome. We win an FA Cup. Unfortunately, though, we couldn't win the Carabao Cup. That goes to Man City. PSG win the Champions League. Tottenham are playing Champions League football next year after they win in the Europa League. Getafe have taken down Rangers to win the Conference League. Every year I think to myself, Ross Stewart is about to fall off the face of the earth and that he's hit his peak and he can't get any better. He's gone up three overall again. He's 86 overall with 26 goals to his name. Ross Stewart is our man. I, I want to take this guy as far as we can. It is time though for us to say goodbye and thank you to Jordan Henderson, a Sunderland player through and through. I'm really glad we got to bring him back to the stadium of light to end his career. And then for Anderson, Huggins, and Equa, I'm letting them all walk. I don't want to have players in the squad anymore that are 70 rated or lower. I only want
wants studs, and we can easily replace these guys. I'm sorry to Ballard, but we need to take it our center back role to the next level. Mark Gahey, an Englishman playing abroad, him and Singo have the chemistry of them playing together at Torino, or in the Italian league, I should say. Salamatano is where Gahey is. They want 70 million pounds for him. Let's bump that up to 62.9. Yeah, 64.9, I can happily accept that. Gahey would be an incredible addition to our back line. Let's get him in. I love getting my business done nice and quickly. Let's get it over the line here to kick off season number six. Crucial first team player is what we want. I want him to be a crucial part of a hopefully deep Europa League run. I mean, my goal this year is to go deep in the Europa League and to qualify for the Champions League by any means necessary. 70,000 pounds a week for wages. What's he gonna say? Oh my God, he wants a lot more than that. Get rid of that bonus. Come on, Mark, accept it. He wants 99, whatever, whatever. Welcome to the club. We may have overpaid just a bit, but overall, I think we have made the right decision by flying colors. Like this is a great pickup, Mark. Gahey, welcome to Sunderland. If you've been watching my content for a hot minute, you would know I love getting highly talented goalkeepers that are going on in age a little bit to bring in as backups. Kevin Trapp fits the mold perfectly. We pay four million pounds to get an 85 rated goalkeeper that can come in and do a job for us if necessary. He's going to be so crucial this season. Kevin Trapp, welcome to the Stadium of Light. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I think we might have found Riyad Mahrez Regen. Fatih said, 17 year old, 75 overall Algerian winger. This dude is the perfect backup to Diallo and someone that we can grow, nourish, and hopefully have as a great prospect moving forward. This team just feels ready. If I'm being honest, it feels ready. The fact that the lowest rated player in our starting 11 is 84 rated Neil just fills me with so much confidence. We should be getting top four. We should be going on a deep Europa League run. Honestly, we should should be playing Champions League footy. And this is definitely a group we should be getting out of. Galatasaray, Sturm, Graz, and Rosenborg. If we don't top this group and get ourselves the knockout rounds, I will be shocked. I was definitely hoping we'd be sitting inside the top four by this stage, but it's not all doom and gloom. We're only two points away. So let's just keep winning games in the second half of the season and get ourselves automatic qualification. Really encouraging signs though, to see that we went undefeated in the group of the Champions League. Preliminary rounds are going to go ahead and we're going to have to wait and see who we face. I'm hoping it's not going to be Liverpool or Bayern Munich, who my face is currently covering, or Villarreal. Hopefully, it's somebody terrible. What a second half of the season, ladies and gentlemen. Sunderland, our Premier League champions. That was a phenomenal second half of the year. We win it on the final day and we have taken down Chelsea. Oh my God. That is brilliant. Let's be real. 80 points. Most years you don't win a Premier League title with 80 points, but I'm not complaining. We've got Champions League footy next year and we've won a Premier League title. Beautiful. Who got relegated? Give us some big names. It's Leeds, West Ham and Hull. We did. Is this, this count as a double? I mean, we won the Community Shield at the start of the season. Is this a treble? Have we just done a domestic treble? We win the FA Cup. We have gone back to back as FA Cup champions. Nah, our trophy cabinet is starting to fill up rapidly. Tottenham though, they have absolutely thumped West Ham to win a Carabao Cup. Benfica have broken their European curse as they take down PSG and win the Champions League. And unfortunately, we have not won the Europa League. That goes to Getafe. We took down BSC Young Boys in the round of 16, but in the quarterfinal Finals, unfortunately lost to Liverpool. Roma. Roma have won the Conference League. Oh my God. R Ross Stewart. All right, I need to check next season because Ross Stewart genuinely might win a Ballon d'Or. Ross Stewart has bagged himself 38 goals. This dude is a rebuild Hall of Famer. You can't debate it with me. You can't have any other opinion. I might buy a Sunderland jersey with Stewart on the back. Most other years, I'd be going nuts at Reader getting 19 goals and eight assists, but Ross Stewart has just gone off. Again, though, more players that are lower rated than 70 are going to be walking on freeze. But this season has exceeded my wildest expectations. We're into the Champions League. We're Premier League champions and we have completed a domestic treble. So much confidence for next year. I'm just giving you guys a little heads up. I'm going balls to the wall this year. Not only do I want a just bitchin starting 11, I want our bench to be able to beat most football teams on planet Earth. And with the board giving us 200 
Million pounds. Yeah, we, we have that opportunity. We have that ability. This is an unbelievable signing. I have not signed Enzo Fernandez in a long time, if at all now that I think back on it. But I'm glad if this is the first time I've signed him, I'm glad we're doing it because Enzo Fernandez is going to join us here from Juventus. And we're going to bring ourselves in an absolute stud of a backup striker. He's 84 rated. It is Amine Adli. God forbid anything happens to the great man himself, Ross Stewart. I would feel comfortable with Amine Adley coming off the bench and doing a job. I mean, I'd hope so if I spent 42 mil on the fella. Honestly, I'm just trying to give myself the best chance possible to have backups and have options and plans in place if anything happens to starting 11 players. Ben White's going to come into the squad here. He can play right back. He can play center back. He can really do a job for us in the defense. So we're going to sign him from Everton. Now that we've had a sniff of success with this team, I want every trophy possible. I want every bit of silverware possible. I want us to become the greatest team on planet Earth. And honestly, I don't see why that shouldn't be an issue. But we are in the Champions League for the first time. Let's go check out our group. We need to make sure we are locked in, ladies and gentlemen. Inter Milan, Ajax, Hammerby. It's not the world's toughest group, but still, there is some serious potential for this to go tits up. We just need to keep winning and put our best foot forward. Let's go see if we qualify for the knockout rounds in three, two, one. You bloody beauty, top of our Champions League group here. Zero losses, five points ahead of Inter. That just gives me even more confidence. An interesting matchup here in the last 16 though is we have Eintracht Frankfurt. This should be an interesting clash. Of course, the goal needs to be back-to-back -back Premier League titles. I want to make the top four, but I would love if we could do it by winning the Premier League once again. Currently two points off the pace, sitting in third. A massive moment right now, ladies and gentlemen. We travel away to Frankfurt, trying to get ourselves a strong advantage to bring home to the Northeast, bring back home to Sunderland. Here we go. Sunderland versus Eintracht Frankfurt. First leg is a 2-0 win. Who else but Ross? Stewart getting a brace. Just keep it rolling, fellas. Keep it rolling. We're at the Stadium of Light here. 2-0 advantage. Get ourselves through the quarterfinals. The scoreline, it's a 2-1 win. We get it done. Clark getting the brace this time. And we are through 4-1 on aggregate, which is phenomenal. Time to take things up a gear, though. We're staying in Germany, this time heading to Dortmund. It is the current Bundesliga leaders at the time of recording, Borussia Dortmund. First leg is at home, which, I mean, it's not what we've been used to, but we need a big result to get ourselves in a strong position for the second leg. Jude Bellingham still at Dortmund in this save. Hopefully, it doesn't bite us in the backside. Oh, it's a I mean, we should have at least got one goal there, man. Nil, nil, a lot of yellow cards as well. Hopefully that doesn't come to some suspensions for the second leg in Dortmund. That is a massive blow. Our left back, Pabrisi, is going to be suspended for the second leg at the Signal Aduna Park. It all hangs in the balance right now. What I've done is I've shifted Greaves to the left back role and then brought in Ballard, play starting center back. Hopefully that works out well. We are headed to the Signal Aduna Park. Bellingham starting again. They've got Rodri, they've got Elliot, Almada. It's a good team, but is it enough? It is. Oh my God, we're eliminated. Edic, oh, Ekatike has gone off in the second. Oh my, I'm, I am lost for words, man. We've been done in extra time and eliminated in the Champions League quarterfinals. That hurts. We have snuck into the top four by the skin of our teeth. We finished fourth this year. The draws have absolutely killed us and we have not gone back to back as Premier League champions. This second half of the season has been a massive disappointment. Scrolling down towards Liverpool finished ninth. That is wild. Sheffield United, Bournemouth and Forest all relegated. Unfortunately, the disappointment continues. We lost the Community Shield at the start of the season. Manchester United have won the FA Cup. Meanwhile, Leeds take down Peterborough in a wild Carabao Cup final. Barcelona have won an El Clasico for the Champions League. All I'm saying right now is if no English teams win European silverware, I'm a happy man. You Juventus, cool, cool, Juventus. Come on, nobody win the Conference League, although I don't even know if the Conference League is an automatic Champions League spot, but the winner is going to be Arsenal. Where did Arsenal finish? Oh God, Arsenal finished seventh. I, I am praying that the Conference League is only a Europa League spot, not a Champions League spot. 26 goal season again here for Ross Stewart. Going down in overall though, which is a concerning side. I mean, he is 32 years of age after all. If we want to be a Champions League winner this year, we need a super 
superstar. And I don't mean some rinky-dink midfielder. I mean one of the best players on planet Earth at this stage of the career mode. It is the 92 rated 26-year-old Spanish midfielder, Hedry, who's going to join us here at Sunderland and just take us to a whole different level. We have paid 126 million pounds for his services. Wild. One thing that caught me off guard last season, though, was the retirement of Kevin Trapp, which means we only have one goalkeeper in the entire squad. So we're getting ourselves a backup keeper here. It is Marco Carneschi, 84 rated, 29 years of age. We're bringing him across from Brentford. This team is ridiculous. I thought this team was ridiculous last year, but now it is proving the point even more. Stuart, this is a big year for Stuart. 33 years of age. He's gone down to an 87. We need our hero, Ross Stewart, to get his hands on a Champions League title. We're in Group H of the Champions League here, and we've got an opponent that has won a Champions League in this video. Benfica, along with Frankfurt and Hammerby. But again, my expectations, top of the group. That's my expectation. Let's go and deliver. Amazing, amazing, amazing. We're through to the last 16. Although, we copped a loss, which I'm not over the moon about, but it is what it is. We still top the group. Who are we going to be facing in the last 16? We're going to be facing, okay, we've got Ajax in the Champions League round of 16. The Dutch juggernaut Ajax. Also, Club Bruges versus Leicester. Is it 2016 all over again? Here we are on the 1st of January. We're currently having an invincible season. We have only conceded 11 goals all season. Oh my God, I want an invincible season. 13 wins, six draws, zero losses. Can it happen? Lock in, ladies and gentlemen. Another Champions League campaign is ahead of us here. I don't know why I pronounced the word league the way I did, but hopefully that's not a bad omen. First leg in Amsterdam, taken on Ajax, and it's a 3-1 win. Clark with a brace, Stewart with a goal, and we have a healthy advantage as we head home. Come on, lads. Surely. We've got the 3-1 advantage. We're at home. Let's get ourselves back to the Champions League quarters for the second successive season. It's another 3-1 win. Still with a brace. No injuries and suspensions which is massive. And we go through 3-2. Sorry, 6-2 on aggregate. Things have just gone up another gear though, ladies and gentlemen. We have got PSG. That is never a fun prospect. PSG and is going to be peaking right now. Quarterfinals are where we bowed out last season. Let's not make that a trend. Let's get past it here. Mbappe, Lissan, sorry, yeah, Lissan Andrew Martinez, Moretti. They've got a very good team here, PSG. Can we get a strong first leg in? It's a one-all draw. Pedri with the suspension, or with the yellow card, hopefully not leading to a suspension. But it's our left back, Parisi, who ties this one up in Paris. I mean, it's literally in his name. Okay, all is good. Pedri, not suspended. Champions League quarterfinals, second leg. This is where we bowed out. We need a big performance here, though. Stewart, Rita, Clark, Diallo. I need you guys scoring goals. I need us through to a Champions League semi-final. And we do it on penalties. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We go to extra time. No, Pedro with another yellow. It's Ballard of all players, though, that equalized and got us to extra time. That is a wild game. And we take down PSG in a penalty shootout. But my worst fears have been confirmed. Pedri suspended for the first leg of the semis. And that means our opponent in the semi-finals. It's going to be an all-English affair as we take on Manchester City. We're going to miss Pedri in this one, man. We're going to miss Pedri. First leg at the Stadium of Light. We need to be on top of our game if we want to get past Manchester City. They've got a really good team there. Haaland, of course, a stud. Pablo Havi. They've got Dennis Schroeder, my favorite German player guard in there who decided to quit the NBA and join the Premier League. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The first leg is a two all draw. We come from behind and it is Rita who overturns a 2-0 deficit and gives us hope and keeps us alive in the Champions League. Big second leg ahead. I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a little bit of anxiety going through my veins right now. Pedri's back into the starting 11, but man, our job is still tough. They've brought in Tete. They've dropped Dennis Schroeder. Second leg here. We've got Pedri back. We're on the road in Manchester. The scoreline is a 2-0 
win. Stewart and Pedri. Yes, lads. Oh, that is actually phenomenal. That is actually incredible. We are through to a Champions League final with Sunderland. But Diallo, one of our earliest signings, is not going to be available for the Champions League final through suspension. Are you kidding me? Oh, that hurts, man. That hurts. But in the final, we are going to be taking on Atletico Madrid, who absolutely thumped Leipzig in the semifinals. This game is going to be massive. Taking a look around the grounds, that's a big time Europa League final. Juventus taking down Man United. And in the Conference League, it was our imperialism darlings, AC Monza winning. The big question though, ladies and gentlemen, did we go invincible? We did not. We had three losses, unfortunately. And I hate to admit it, but I saw the first loss and it was against Newcastle, which, yeah, when I saw that, I was like, Ugh. but regardless, we have won another Premier League title and we are going to be playing Champions League football again next season. We finished comfortably ahead of Manchester City to win the league. And as we scroll down the Premier League table, the relegated sides are Palace, Brentford and Watford. Liverpool did win the FA Cup and they also won the Carabao Cup. Just another unbelievable season here for Ross Stewart. This dude is a stud. This dude, I cannot believe he's been our striker since day one and has survived this far. I'm happy in season one that I started him ahead of Joe Gellhart because that really could have taken my hero away from us. But my game plan with Diallo unfortunately being suspended, I am putting Singo, the right wing back, up to right midfield and starting Ben White as our starting right back for the Champions League final. I am so excited for this game. Let's go make Sunderland champions of Europe. It is the battle of the red and white stripes. We're playing in Atletico Madrid's home city, but the odds may be against us. Let's make sure the scoreboard isn't. Come on, Sunderland. Let's get ourselves... Get, get out of each other's... We're, we're not going to win a Champions League final when we're running into each other. Oh, keep it off his line. Keep it off his line. Oh, he's back. Oh, Rita with the roulette. Rita with the shot. But that's a great save from Jan or Black. Madrid playing a bit of a press here, which we can use to our advantage just like that. Putting it out wide. Go, Stewart. Go, Stewart. Stewart gives us the lead on the counter attack. Never play a press against me. That is where we absolutely thrive. And it is Ross Stewart giving us the lead here in the Champions League final. What a finish from the Scotsman. We cannot afford to let them back into this one. They have a shot, but that's never going to find the back of the net. Got a free kick here. Going to try putting this one on the noggin of somebody in the box. Mark Gahey playing the ball in. We're going to go for a Pisces. Well, that was audacious. Joel Felix, he's outpacing Ben White. That's a class block, though. They win the ball back, though. Oh, what a challenge from Greaves. What a slide tackle. Stewart over the top to Rita. We caught Nelson lacking. And we're going to make it to. Oh, that is all because of Greaves with the slide tackle. What a ball as well. What a finish on the half volley. And we have got one hand on the Champions League trophy. There it is, lads. I just time wasted to get that title safely. We have won a Champions League here with Sunderland. What an incredible journey it has been. One of my favorite rebuilds of FIFA 23 so far. And I'm so proud of this team, man. I am so proud of what we've done. And especially for that man there, Ross Stewart. What a legend. And who else but Ross Stewart to be the man wearing the captain's armband to lift us the Champions League title. Sunderland, champions of Europe. Lads, if you enjoyed today's review, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video. Peace.